We've reached another stage in the Ukraine war where NATO could have found a way out, but they've decided to double down, write the checks and cheer for more war in Europe. The sad thing is they don't know what war is. The bodies burnt to death, hacked to death, ripped apart in pieces, the children. Go to the funeral of a child killed in war, that would change a few minds. The parents weeping by the gravesite, it's an affront to humanity, we're killing ourselves. It's hard filming when someone's daughter has just been ripped apart by a shell at a bus stop and her mother is screaming like a wild beast, her world broken by a missile supplied by some foreign country that doesn't give a damn, or a man shaking, stumbling around lost and in shock as his wife lies dead on the pavement. Most people don't know the terror of artillery, the fear that rushes through the body as it shakes the very world around you. So much slaughter, if it was quick, you tell yourself they were lucky. Often when I write about it, I don't mind admitting the tears flow. And I'm not even a frontline soldier. If Ukraine had a chance of winning, at least I would see the strategic purpose. But they don't, and everyone knows it, except for the most desperate and deluded. Ukraine has become a cage of men waiting to be slaughtered for the impossible dream of continued Western hegemony. The power balance in the world has inevitably changed. Western policy needs to change with it. But the money will flow, the conscription age dropped, until the last Ukrainian. They don't have the courage or the vision to see another way. When did peace in Europe become such a radical idea where mainstream journalists, politicians, academics don't even whisper its name? If you just don't pay attention, then the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of European men just isn't happening. The best way to make peace was at the Istanbul talks. The second best time was every single day after that. Ukraine and NATO will now lose more territory, more men, with each passing day. The problem with NATO's trial and error foreign policy is that history is rather permanent. What will be the price of incompetence? Kharkov, Odessa, courage for the soldiers, but not for you. I think of that when I see the laughing and cheering at at the NATO conferences, the fear when the civilian cars disappear and you're on the road alone, heading to the front, that's when the fear kicks in. You take a deep breath, you know what's coming, or rather you don't this time, another deep breath. Most of them would realize it then and plead for the car to be turned around, but they keep paying the checks. The only ones who benefit from this war are those making money from it. It's certainly not in European strategic interests. Patriots knew it from the start, but the great statesmen of Europe went to bed long ago. We've entered the era of the incompetence. Meanwhile, the mainstream press and academia cheer on the circus, the odd raised eyebrow and sideways glance, but they bought a ticket, may as well stay to the end. Ukraine needs to give up territory for peace. The longer this goes on, it will only damage Ukrainian and Western interests further. Those who knew it told you from the start.